What exactly is a standing wave and how is a standing wave related to resonant frequencies? So let's begin our discussion by looking at the following setup. Let's suppose we take a thin cord shown in green, we tie that thin cord at one end to the wall and we take the other end of our cord and we begin vibrating, oscillating our cord up and down as shown. So, when we create those oscillations, we in turn create mechanical waves. And these mechanical waves will propagate towards the other end of our cord, bounce back, reflect, inverted, and travel back to this end. So, what we're essentially creating is a jumble of waves that will interfere with one another. Now, if we oscillate our cord at just the right frequency, called the natural frequency or the resonant frequency, we create a wave that is called a standing wave. Now a standing wave is given that name because it appears to be standing. It appears to be stationary even though it's actually moving back and forth. So this is one example of a standing wave where to the eye our wave will appear to have this shape but the wave actually is moving back and forth. Now, any given standing wave has regions called nodes and antinodes. So these are our antinodes shown by B and these are our nodes shown by A. A node is essentially a region on our standing wave where destructive interference takes place. In other words, if we take the algebraic sum of our displacements of our individual waves that are found propagating back and forth, our displacements at the node will sum up to zero and that's exactly why our displacement at point A and point A are zero. On the other hand, at point B, we have constructive interference taking place, which essentially means that that will be our location of maximum displacement. So once again, as you begin to oscillate, the waves will travel to one end and back creating wave interference, a jumble of waves. However, if you oscillate our cord with just the right frequency known as the resonant frequency, you will produce a standing wave as shown in this diagram. This standing wave will have regions called destructive regions where destructive interference takes place and those are known as nodes. And our constructive interference locations are known as antinodes. So a standing wave is essentially a large amplitude wave that appears to be stationary and has regions called nodes and anti-nodes. And frequencies called resonant frequencies produces our standing waves. Now technically speaking, we could have as many standing waves as we want. So the first three standing waves for the following diagram are shown in this uh, diagram. So we have our first standing wave, the second standing wave, the next standing wave. Now the lowest frequency at which a standing wave can be produced on a cord that is fixed at both ends as shown is called a fundamental frequency or also known as the first harmonic. The next frequency is called the second harmonic, the third frequency is called the third harmonic and so on and so forth. Now notice our first harmonic in this case has two nodes and one anti-node. The second harmonic has two anti-nodes and one, two, three nodal regions. And the third harmonic has one, two, three, four nodes and one, two, three anti-nodes. Now for this particular example where we have a standing wave that is between two walls, so our string is attached at both ends, is fixed at both ends, we have the following general formula that will give us a relationship between our wavelength of that particular standing wave given by this uh, lambda and our L, which is our total length of our string or cord. So once again, L is the length of our cord, 
our lambda is our wavelength of the standing wave and the n simply represents the number of harmonics. So if we're dealing with the first harmonic, n is 1. If we're dealing with the second harmonic, n is 2 and so on and so forth. So we see that when n is 1, our wavelength for our standing wave is 2 times its length. So if its length is this entire region, then 2 times this length is the wavelength of our standing wave. Now, recall that the velocity of a mechanical wave traveling in a thin cord is given by the following equation. The velocity is equal to the square root of the force in our cord divided by our mu, where the mu is simply the mass of the cord divided by the length of our cord. And this equation gives us the velocity of our particular standing wave. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to utilize these two equations. Let's suppose that a piano cord is one meter long and has a mass of 10 grams. If the frequency of oscillation is given to be 200 hertz, find the tension in our cord assuming that the oscillation is at fundamental frequency. So once again, fundamental frequency simply means we're dealing with our first harmonic, so that means our n is equal to 1. So we want to use the following two equations. Recall that the velocity is equal to the product of the frequency and the wavelength of our standing wave. And we get this equation from this equation because our L is equal to 1 times lambda divided by 2. So lambda is simply equal to 2 L because our N is 1. So we essentially want to take 2L and replace our lambda with 2L. And we find that the velocity of our standing wave in that particular chord is equal to 2L multiplied by the frequency. And we know the velocity is equal to the square root of this ratio. So we see 2L times the frequency is equal to the square root of FT divided by mu, where FT is our tension in a chord that we're looking for. So if we square both sides and multiply by mu, we get 2LF, where F is our frequency squared, multiplied by mu is equal to the tension in our chord. So we plug in L to be our 1 meter, we plug in F to be our 200 hertz, and our mu is simply, well, it's the mass divided by our length. And the mass is simply 10 grams divided by 1,000 because we want to convert from grams to kilograms. So we plug those values into our calculator and we get a tension in our cord of 1,600 newtons. So this is the force in our cord when the frequency is 200 hertz and we are dealing with the first harmonic.